Settler Colonialism in Kenya. First of all, we need to start from the age of exploration when European powers would travel across the world in search of new land and resources. During the age of exploration, European powers became interested in the goods of the East. In particular, countries such as Portugal began to sail around the southern tip of Africa to trade with East Africa and Asia. In 1498, Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama opened trade relations with the Kenyan city of Malindi. The attraction of products such as ivory in this area turned Malindi and the neighboring city of Mombasa into major trade hubs between Kenyan peoples and the Portuguese. In the mid-19th century, missionaries, missionary explorers from Europe ventured into Africa to, to convert natives to Christianity. Among them were Johann Ludwig Kropp and Johannes Revman. Throughout their adventures inland, they not only spread the religion of Christianity, but also they made new discoveries. Revman became the first European to stumble upon Mount Kilimanjaro. A few years later, the pair of explorers also stumbled upon Mount Kenya, Africa's second highest peak. Stories of their adventures eventually brought about a different crowd to this region of Africa, which further encouraged trade and promoted a growing desire to explore unknown territory. In 1885, Europeans from many countries met together to divide Africa for colonization among the European nations. This later would be known as the Scramble for Africa. Participating countries included European powers, such as Great Britain, France, Germany, and many others. There were no African representatives to the conference, meaning that no thought was given about the best interests of the African people. The misrepresentation of the African peoples led to little being accomplished in terms of creating positives for Africans. Instead, white European men in a meeting room decided the fate of an entire continent, ignoring the welfare of the people who were already there. Kenya was at the whim of the British. Following the conference, widespread colonization followed. As the film Out of Africa depicts, African tribes were treated extremely poorly by the white settlers. They were often pushed off their land, harshly abused, and generally regarded as inferior beings. Some of their land was even taken and converted to plantations where they were kept as slaves to work under the whites. They were subject to forced European education and culture. The 1920s marked the beginning of the first organized opposition, op opposition to white settlers. In the 1950s, the tribes of Kenya organized to overthrow the British colonial government. It was a dismal failure. Because of the British policy of divided rule, the Kenyan natives were kept powerless. They could not unify to represent a cohesive unit. Power was divided throughout Kenya, making revolt impossible. The, fail the failure of the revolt led to even worse relations between the natives and colonists. The failure, to which the, the failure led to witch hunts for those responsible for white deaths and tribes were treated even more harshly than before. Furthermore, the British opened up prison camps in which they would abuse the Africans to a harsh extent. Over time, Europeans had growing desires to head back to their respective homelands or they simply lost interest in occupying African countries. As European settlement declined in the area, the Kenyan people sought independence from Great Britain. After a long, drawn-out political battle, Kenya became independent on December 12, 1963. The, at the time, Prime Minister Jomo Kenyatta became the first president of, of Kenya on that day, and he is seen as one of the founding fathers of Kenya. He was tasked with trying to bring together and unite different distinct tribes after many, many years of division by the Europeans, and he had to do this, had to do his best to peacefully remove European foreigners from Kenya. Throughout the film Out of Africa, we follow the actions of a woman named Karen as she grows accustomed to owning a farm in Africa. We observe her relationship with the Africans, as well as how she's treated by the rest of the white people. Racial tensions still exist within Kenya, especially among those who command political action within the country. There are remnants of the aristocracy sparsely spread throughout the country today. What are the positives and negatives that come from the European colonialism of Kenya? Compare and contrast the colonialism of Kenya with the colonialism of America. 
Does the movie Out of Africa accurately depict actual environment of the time? <laughs>